I'd like to say, being that I'm going through the process and I feel that both my husband and myself made a real effort to keep it a conscious divorce, mm -hmm. is that if you could just get the help you need um, to, to, to deal with the anger and the fear or whatever other negative emotions come up and just get real with each other and just come from a loving place. And, uh, and still honor each other as you did at the beginning of the relationship mm -hmm. and say, I will walk through this as painful as, as it is by putting my pain aside or working through it and still honor you as a human being mm -hmm. and not give up our finances to lawyers who are just going to fuel the situation because they don't know our personal lives and not bring anger and hurt to the children and, and show them Absolutely. an example of what is not a positive behavior in relationship it can be worked out and sometimes it's more difficult than taking the easy path of being vengeful and angry but the benefits are so much larger exactly. because you can keep your family intact especially if you have children you'll still be a family unit on some level because you'll be there for your children hopefully Absolutely. as they age and everything and so if you can keep a level of integrity in there and a level of compassion. Just try to remember something about that person that you loved or you still might love and only see that in them instead of all the negative that might have come into it and negotiate from there. And it works, it really works. And then you can work on coming out of this more whole as individuals. If you choose to move into another relationship afterwards, then it's less that you have to carry into that relationship. So whatever it takes to get that help to get there. Here's three examples of how to do it. Here's a team right here. To have integrity while you're going through the process. Integrity, respect. And And still find something that you love about. There's got to be something you still love about that right. person. And I, I know that, that Marilyn, you know, you've really taken your time in going through this process. Mm -hmm. You first went to seek therapy together mm -hmm. to see if you could resolve your differences, and then you realize you came to a point where you realized that, that wasn't going to happen. That you really wanted something different. But tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I the time factor and what kind of time it takes. It takes however much time it's supposed to take. Mm -hmm. Is what the bottom line is. And if you can honor that, then you um, grow through the process because it could be two steps forward, one step back, and could be a 10 run, running steps forward and one back. But it, you just have to stay in the moment and honor that, you know, it just doesn't feel right right now to end it like this. We need to discover more of how we can do this with a little bit more integrity and a little more respect. I think um, if you cut and run, and I'm sure a lot of people in, unfortunately experience that, then they take all that baggage with them and they deal with the anger and the hurt and the, all that afterwards. But if you can, if you know, you're in a safe place and you can stay there and just honor the time and not push it, not say, oh, I need to be divorced, I need out of here. Because it's a frantic feeling situation. And you're we, very vulnerable. Right? Very vulnerable right. and you lose right. all your securities and your comfort zones, everything's shaken up sure. on the deepest level. Well, when you were talking about the what happens at the beginning of divorce, I mean, even if you're not comfortable with that person, you did create this new reality. Because to me, what a marriage is, if I were being asked that question, is what's your definition of a marriage? It's, it's two people creating a totally new reality, creating their, Kurt Vonnegut used to talk about it being a country of two. You know, where you go and you're setting up your own ethics, your own religion. If you're not joining one, you're, you're setting up a, a reality. And now the, the co-creator of that reality and you are leaving and you're part of that reality. So it, it's extremely threatening even if things, yeah, even if both parties are saying on the mental level we need to go, the emotional body's absolutely freaking out. Oh, yeah. Which well, I'm sure you... Marilyn, you have a level of maturity just as you speak about this that many people don't bring to the process. Mm -hmm. I really want to compliment you or applaud you for that. Some of us would have to get real work if uh, <laughs> everyone was, to, was, was approaching that with the level of uh, awareness and kindness and compassion that you're doing. And you know, as it applies to children, 
Really, the research shows only two really significant factors for children. One is that both parents stay actively engaged with the child or children, and the other is that the parents are able to maintain civility mm -hmm. with each other. Mm -hmm. And it looks like you and your uh, ex-husband are, are very, very skilled in that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We, we promised each other that we would never, well, in our relationship, we never talked down to each other. We're, there were never unkind words between us. And we sat down and promised each other that through this process, we would not say one single negative thing about the other person to our children at all. Well, that's, that's and, really and, and, and And our children are teenagers, and um, it's still a difficult time for them. But they, they see that, and they've spoken to us individually offline that, you know, I really am glad that you and Dad are going through this in a kind way, and that I really believe you because we told them, hopefully our relationship will be better when we're through this mm. because we're not modeling right now a good mm. husband-wife relationship. Sure. So hopefully afterwards we can be better friends. And so, you know, through the process, that's one of the things they're learning. Mm -hmm. That's great. You know, I've seen a lot of cases that are do not um, replicate what you're doing or, or not modeling what you've just discussed. And what I've seen th is cases where, uh, let's say, someone is a homemaker and the husband comes home and says, I'm leaving you, it's over. And, uh, you know, what do you do in that situation? What is the empowerment approach in that situation? And uh, I just believe there are a lot of people who are going through those kind of dire financial situations where, you know, what, what do you do? Not only <laughs> dire financial situations, but a severe loss of self-esteem. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I know right. my mom, she was a homemaker, I mean, she's a 1940s, 50s sort of mom, and uh, Betty Crocker, you know. <laughs> and, and at the end of the 31 years, she had, to, she had all the friends. I mean, she just really didn't know what to do when dad didn't want to do that anymore, didn't want to play that game anymore. And it's hard to go back to work after you've been out of the workforce that's, that's yes. true. for a very long yes. time. It's yes. very difficult. That's true, and I've been in court where, let's say, someone has been a homemaker for 30 years, and the judge is saying, what are you doing to find work? Uh, right. Okay, uh, in the past, uh, spousal support, uh, was more inclined to go for longer periods of time. Now in California, you're looking at spousal support for half the length of the marriage, or in a marriage of 10 years or more, you, it may be permanent, it may be for the rest of your life, it may not. It's not, it's not black and white. So there's a recognition by the society of certain norms like that, which I didn't know anything about. The, the, in other words, that a marriage has lasted over 15 right. years, now we're gonna have to, in a certain way, make sure that years. we support that. Right. But it brings me back to a concern with with uh, when you're going into the divorce process, looking at it and deciding what type of divorce path can you afford? What would be practical and what is going to further your future? Because if you have a pot of money and it's a finite amount mm -hmm. and you've got a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars or beyond in assets or less, how much can you contribute of this money towards your legal fees? Mm -hmm. Because if your emotions get in the way and you opt for highly combative litigious litigation, mm -hmm. then at the end of the day, you don't have gone. any assets the left. Money's mm -hmm. gone. The money, mm -hmm. the equity, the liquid assets, money that could have gone towards your kid's college fund or starting a new business mm -hmm. or buying a new house or getting retooled or going back to college, what have you, gone. is gone. It's so important. And it's so yeah. important to be conscious of this and finding the right lawyer. Uh, to work with you in the right process in the right process